Jimmy, Jimmy, huh. come on Jimmy, wake up, it's time to film your YouTube video. Oh. Hey folks, uh, just a quick uh, note here before we go any further, uh, I've been having a lot of help recently uh, with the channel, thanks to everybody who's subscribed and helping me along, a massive, massive shout out to a friend of mine, Mick. Uh, Tinkerman Mick is on YouTube, he's been helping me loads, absolutely great guy, go check out his channel, Tinkerman Mick, I'll put the link down in the description. Now, what's happening? Welcome back to Jimmy Channels, today we're going to be talking about things that scare me. Now, years ago, well, only a couple of years ago, I used to be scared of absolutely everything. Are you talking films, stories, things like that, anything that was remotely scary, I did not like it. Now, I think it all kind of started when I was really young, but the most vivid memory I've got is when I was 16. I watched uh, The Exorcist, as a lot of people have done now, and they watch it. They don't find it scary at all, but when I was 16, it really, really messed with my head. Now, when I talk about things that are scary, like, like scary movies and stuff, I don't mean slasher movies, you know, like things like Halloween, Friday the 13th, they don't scare me at all. I mean, I couldn't give a shit. If Jigsaw wants to play a game. What really scares me is Mensch. possession. Anything to do with kids. Nope. No, 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 no. No. Even if I spent a much, even being in a dark room with a mirror, I'm not looking at that mirror. I'll avoid eye contact with it. And even if I start thinking, Bloody Mary, in my head, I will go out of my way. To not think about it. Things like a, a night of a wardrobe is slightly open. Mm -hmm. Lights on, get that shit shut, back to bed, under the covers. I watched The Conjuring a few years back and I did not sleep right for a good couple of days. I was on edge the whole time, laying in bed, looking at the dark corners of the room, wondering what's going on, shadows moving. No, lights back on. That's because you were still with your ex. <laughs> yeah, she was sleeping. <laughs> I think a lot of things to do with me being scared is uh, because I suffer from a thing called uh, sleep paralysis. If you've never heard of sleep paralysis before, it's basically your mind wakes up before your body does. So your mind automatically goes into a state of alarm because nothing's moving. So it causes fear. And when you're in that kind of still dream state, you can start to decide to say, hallucinate. Um, so a lot of people see like, dark images in the room, things move, and they hear voices. Some people will see a hag, like an old woman. Also oh. your ex. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Some people see their ex. No, but a lot of people see these dark images going around the room. Uh, me, personally, I see, like, flashing images in my head of what can only be described as demonic shit. Maybe I should go to see a shrink. But yeah, I see here, like faces and dark shadows, dark shadows always seem to be in the room. A lot of people, they say that you know, they feel like I'm pressing down, like they can't breathe. I always feel the pressing down, like I can't move. And that's obviously because the body isn't like a cat like state, not moving. So you get dead panicky, you can't move at all. Eventually you can start to move, you feel your fingers moving. They say that you should relax, calm down and you'll come out of it naturally. But when you start seeing that freaky shit, it's hard to calm down. I mean, I looked it all up on, online to see if I was the only one suffering from it, thinking I was <laughs> some sort of weirdo. But I've looked at a lot of people who do suffer from it, they all suffer from these things we've spoke about. Um, and I'm not alone, it's not just me. There's even one guy in Scotland who uh, suffers from it and uh, he sees demons and apparently has demon. But who will it sexually assault them? I don't know, I just woke up with a sore arse. <laughs> Maybe he's just got a freaky roommate. Now, my Mrs. Microphone, my fiancée, Caitlin, uh, she loves, loves creepy stuff. To the point where it's kind of disturbing. Hey. Like, <laughs> now, she loves all the creepy stuff and she really, really wanted me to be into it as well. Something we could kind of bond over, but I was like, no, 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 you, you don't understand my mind. It, it gets freaky. But she uh, calmed me down, come on, you're alright. And we started watching things called Creepypasta. 
Now, stick around to the end of the video because I've actually got my own creepypasta that I want you to watch. But if you don't know what creepypasta is, basically it's a story told to you. A creepy story. There's no jump scares, there's nothing like that. It's just a creepy story. You can check them out online. I'd suggest yeah, looking up Creeps McPasta. Really, really good. Great stories to I wasn't if you're into that kind of thing. Now, at first, when we were listening to it, I wasn't really sure of it. Because I start thinking in my head, if I start listening to these things, I'm inviting the evil in, which messes with me even more. That, this goes all the way back to when I was a kid. Um, I used to have this big fear, like when I was going to sleep, like before the sleep paralysis stuff. I used to have this big fear about um, when I would be laying in bed. I'm sure we've all had it laying in bed and you feel like there's something behind you or something watching you, but you won't turn around to look at it. Now I used to have this image of like the Grim Reaper or a guy in a cloak standing behind me and I had it in my head if I turn and I look at him, he's, I'm going to die. So I used to have my feet completely under the covers all wrapped up and pray that it'd go away. That was my thought, well, my way of thinking. Just imagine stuff like this a lot. These weird images would always be in my head. I mean the creepiest thing my mum told me, I don't know if I remember this, I mean, you know, it's kind of like one of them it's one of the memories that you think you remember but you don't, it's just because people have told you that many times. Um, apparently when I was a kid, I about five, six years old, I drew my mum in a coffin. As you knew, it was her because it had a big M on the front uh, and she was in a coffin um, with angels above her and demons below her. What she didn't know is that M stood for murder. The yeah, M stood for murder. Now, but being a, a five, or six, five or six years old, how the hell would I know about stuff like that? Demons and angels and... I mean, if my kids started doing that, I'd be calling the priest right away. The power of Christ compels you. Holy water of the law. Hello, adoption agency, do you take them on, children? But even with all that in my past, all these weird things, Caitlin still wanted me to get into this creepy stuff. So, we started listening to the creepy pasta. Now, I'm not going to lie, when she first told me the words creepy pasta, I thought it was like haunted tango telly or some shit. But it's actually really, really enjoyable. And now I'm hooked. I've watched The Conjuring now, I've watched like all these creepy, scary movies, and I absolutely love them. I even go on YouTube and I watch things like Nook's Top Fives, Chills, Chills, we can deal with it twice. Trust me, all I get, check them out on YouTube. But now it's weird because nothing seems to satisfy me now. Nothing is what's in my head, what I imagine to be a demon or what something looks like. It never ever affects me what I think. Maybe I'm just fucked up. And now without further ado, here's my creepy pasta, written by me, and it's called That Wardrobe. I started my new job as a systems analysis. The job required me to move to a new town. Both me and my girlfriend, Caitlin, were excited to start a new life really make a foundation for making our own family home. She hadn't found a job yet, but that was okay, because this new job was pretty good pay and it could keep us both afloat for now. My new company had provided us with a house in this really quiet part of town. It was a little bit of a drive to work, but I didn't mind, as I enjoyed the ride. The house was really old, but it had a lot of character and a nice garden. First, it all seemed very big, because there was only two of us, and the house had three bedrooms, but we got used to it. I remember Caitlin insisting on us using the biggest bedroom, because it was really spacious and had a big Victorian looking wardrobe that she said would be perfect for all our clothes. I knew nothing about stylish decor, so how was I to argue with her? She had big plans for decorating the whole house, and it was a good distraction for her while I was very busy at work. A few weeks passed, and the new job was a bit more difficult than I first anticipated. I was coming home very tired, and wasn't the most chipper person. Plus my phone was having trouble charging in the house, and I needed it for work. Caitlin was decorating the whole house, but I hadn't got round to the bedroom. It was just our bed and a couple of chests of drawers, and that old wardrobe. So, when are you going to get round to doing this room? I asked one night, very sarcastically. No one find well she'd been concentrating on the kitchen in the living room. I'm getting round to it, she snapped at me. 
You know how stressful this is doing it by myself. The room seemed cold and damp at night. I had no smoke spots of black mold forming around where the wardrobe was. It must be because it's damp, I proclaimed to her while pointing to the mold at night as we got into bed. Don't worry about it, she sighed, exasperated by my obvious observation. I'll clean it in the morning. I've cleaned it a few times, and she keeps coming back. Not that you'd know, you're too obsessed with work to notice. I gritted my teeth and tried to ignore her sharp remark. These little arguments had been cropping up a lot more recently. But I needed to secure my place with this new job in this great place. So I'll keep quiet and I'll wall work out soon. I wrapped myself up in the covers and tried to go back to sleep. And she done the same. No good night kiss, no love you, no nothing. That night I woke up while it was still very dark. And even though I'd been wrapped in the blankets, I was freezing cold. The window must be open, I thought, as I looked to the window by my side of the bed. It was closed. I slowly sat up in the bed to try and work out where this coldness was coming from. I went to check my phone to see the time, but again it hadn't charged. As I looked around the room in the dark, I was startled to find Caitlin up and out of bed, standing with her back to me. Facing that hole in the wardrobe. Jesus Christ, Caitlin, what are you doing? She never answered. She just stood there. I got up and walked over to her. Babe, what are you doing? I asked, feeling quite concerned at this point. As I got closer, I could see her eyes were slightly open. She had a blank and vacant look on her face. Maybe she's sleepwalking, I thought to myself. Come back to bed, babe. I guided her back to bed. She's never slept walk before. Why not? Maybe it's the stress of this house and moving. I got back into bed, and as I did, my eye caught that wardrobe, and a very bad feeling came over me. Ignore it, I told myself. You're being silly, and I forced myself back to sleep. The next day, after returning home from work, I decided to tell Caitlin what had happened. She did not believe me. She claimed I was making it up. I was trying to make her feel stupid. It wasn't what she needed right now. I wasn't impressed with this, and it resulted in a big argument and not talking for a few days. During this time, work was becoming increasingly difficult, and I was extremely tired. Also, the black mould around the walls where the wardrobe was was getting worse. Why hasn't she cleaned it? I grunted as I changed out of my workshop. I don't have time to clean and work as well. I was really beginning to dislike this bedroom. That night, we both went to bed at the same time, but we still weren't talking. It wasn't right. It'll work itself out, I kept telling myself. Eventually, I must have drifted off. That night, I was plagued by bad dreams. Awful images swirled in my head of me and her fighting on dark shadows loomed around us. And all the time we were standing by that wardrobe. And from it, I could hear a soft, scratching noise. It was like I was arguing with Caitlin, but it wasn't quite her. It was as if something was making her like this, controlling her. I awoke in a cold sweat. The room was very dark and very cold. I could see my breath and what little light there was. I put my hand over to wake Caitlin as I needed to talk about this. Nothing about this was sitting right with me, and I needed to get it off my chest. But as I reached out, I realised it was only me in the bed. For some reason, I knew exactly where she was. I turned my eyes slowly to that wardrobe. There she was, standing, staring at the wardrobe. My mouth went dry, and my pulse quickened, as I realised she wasn't just standing there. She was whispering into that wardrobe. I couldn't hear what was being said, but I knew it wasn't good. And that scratching noise of my dream was faintly there in the background. And then suddenly she stopped. And for a second, I swear, I heard a whispering coming from that wardrobe. She turned at me and stared. And even in the dark, I could see what looked like a demonic grin slowly cross her face. I was terrified. 
and that moment, she pounced at me. Filled with dread, I sprang out of the bed and scrambled for the light. As the light came on, I grabbed her and she began to scream wildly, as if I was the one attacking her. It's me, it's me, I shouted, holding her close, not knowing what else to do. Eventually she calmed down and we both began crying. What was going on? I looked up from her, over her shoulder, and began to stare at that wardrobe. We need to move away from here, I said. This job in this house isn't worth it. We stayed in the living room that night, barely able to sleep. The next day, although it was drastic, we decided to move back in with Caitlin's parents while we tried for a new place, and I quit my job. Caitlin had left the alley to go to her mother's while I packed with her brother, who'd come over to help. None of this was sitting right. While moving the last of the boxes in the bedroom, I couldn't help but stare at that wardrobe. What had unsettled me so much about it? As I approached it, I was filled with an overwhelming feeling of unease. The whispers, the scratching noises, I had to know. As I slowly opened the doors to it, I could feel myself tensing up. It was dark, even in the daylight, an unnatural darkness. I took my phone out to try and take a photo of the flash to see if I could see anything. But as I took the photo, my phone died. Typical. Forget it, I thought, as I grabbed the last of the boxes and swiftly left. This is over. That night at Galen's parents, I managed to finally charge my phone. No problems at all. So I was able to look at the pictures. I had managed to take one of that wardrobe. And as I looked at the photo, in there, in that darkness, there was a face. A face that filled me with fear. A face I'll never forget. <laughs> and there you go, that was my, uh, my mate, Matt Caliban, at the end there. Sorry for the jump scare, sorry for terrifying you with his face. He's got a good YouTube channel, really good. Uh, I'll put his uh, link down below in the description. If you do want to check him out, please do. Great guy. Um, but that's all from me. Thanks very much for watching. If you have been here this far, please do click that like button. And if you like what you're seeing, hit subscribe. Why not? Sharing is caring. Anyway, that's all from me, and I'll.